And welcome to Team Woody Sheep Reviews. You may remember my long range quad with the Easy UHF Nano. Now, one thing anybody that ventures into Easy UHF will find is that the firmware has to match the firmware on this device. You can't have a mismatch. And I'm going to check the firmware on the Nano and see if I need to upgrade. Right, if you navigate to the Immersion RC web page, and that's www.immersionrc.com. When you go to the products page, this is what you'll be presented with. There's the Nano, I can click on the Nano, that takes me into the, into the page, and down on the bottom, there's a firmware download. You'll see that the latest firmware for that is 1.53. Uh, click on that and download it. I've already done that, save time, and it's saved in a folder. Now, when you save it into a folder, which is what I have here, you will see the Nano. It downloads as a zipped file. Now, you may then need to download WinRAR or WinZip to uh, decompress it. What I've done, I've downloaded the Lotus software tool and I'm about to install the version 1.42.5, which will be the latest version to work with. I would suggest you use the latest version. I've also downloaded the TX software, as you can see, 1.53, and it's zipped. Well, as soon as I update the firmware in my TX, my transmitter, I've then got to alter all the other models. So my hex, my wing, my first star. I need to install the software tool. Hurrah! Here's the software. Quite simple. It's a list of some of the devices, which makes it a little bit confusing. A tiny telemetry, easy OSD, um, the eight channel lights, the eight channel, the four channel. Now, the, obviously, the nano's not there, so I would have no clue how to install, reinstall the nano firmware because there's nothing that matches the nano there. So, first thing I need to do is I will assume I will select the four channel, plug it in and see what I need to do. Now, one thing I've I've read up on is when you plug it in, it's not a simple case of plug it in and it works. It needs to recognize itself and install a driver. Now, you need to allow that and make sure that happens and not uh, abort or do anything that could upset that because you need that driver in and to work. So if you're not PC literate, good luck. Right. Because I put it in the lid, it makes life a lot easier. But as you can see, there's a micro USB socket. So that's what I'm plugging into, and I'm gonna plug it into my PC. So it's installed the driver. I've now got uh, Immersion RC USB UR, UART on its on COM port three. Yes, it was very quick because I'd already installed it because I'm not stupid and I didn't want to bore you to death with me cursing and shouting at my PC. But as you can see, it is flashing. So I'm gonna put it down there out of the way. I'm going to read settings from receiver and it is coming up as 1.53 in brackets 6AO. Now I'm going to move on to my external module, the transmitter. So I've now selected the transmitter in the software and here's my transmitter here removed from it. Now I'm going to switch that into the low position. I will explain the low and high very shortly. So as you can see, there is a micro USB socket on there, which I'm now gonna plug into the PC. Still no device found. Oh, the PC has decided, oh, you have plugged something into me. Oh, thank you very much. I'll put you on COM port three. COM port three, here we come. Read settings from transmitter. This used to be on 1.50, which was as it, as it came from the manufacturer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry out the procedure to 
update the firmware in it because I'm not happy with the way the update went so I'm going to redo it now I'm going to unplug and this time I'm going to put it on high and I'm going to keep my finger on the button as I plug it in and I'm going to keep my finger on the button because I'm now going to put it in a firmware update mode hopefully because my finger is getting sore I'm going to let go all right now I've still got my finger on it and it's flashing however like magic the update firmware has decided to become active so I've got no com port showing which becomes a little bit confusing but it apparently it's installed a driver a different type of driver for it to work in the this firmware update mode so when I press the firmware update it then goes to my folder so I'm gonna navigate back easy UHF uh, TX module and I'm going to select the one as you can see there's all in within the driver download for the easy UHF TX module is a load of receiver files as well so now not being PC literate you think what the hell do I do now however if you look at the bottom they marked TX 2 watt TX 500 milliwatt TX 500 TX JR and the JR has the UK com uh, um, compliant version and the standard so we're going to click on the UK compliant version and apparently that is it now there's a preserve configuration now some if you uh, press that button it remembers all the settings however um, I'm doing a fresh reboot that's unchecked and apparently that is done so what I would need to do now is unplug and in the low position plug it back in right read settings from transmitter re transmitter ID 15036 each TX used at the same site needs a unique ID firmware version 1.53 right TX code so basically that is uh, that is it so what I am going to do is now see if I can bind the thing so I'm gonna plug this back into my my transmitter and then I'm gonna power up and see if I can get my uh, my quadcopter bound to my transmitter and see if everything goes well so I'm now going to unplug this and I understand that the firmware is all done right now what I've done is plugged in my easy UHF back in the software and I'm going to the program setting sorry the bind and RSA now you'll notice that there's a bind option there now I'm going to try to see if I can get this to bind so you can see I've got a fast pulsing light now to put this in bind put my transmitter in bind mode is simply put it into low power hold the fail safe bind button down pressed and turn on my transmitter welcome to open tx 280 ram right what when I mode, when I keep my finger on the button and then I start hearing that series of beeps this is ready for binding now I should just press the bind and we should see what happens the lights gone off the software is now about to tell me everything's okay and now the LED has got a pulsating bind succeed remove USB cable and cycle power to both RX and the TX okay I shall unplug it and turn off my transmitter 
I'll turn back. Welcome to open turn on my app. transmitter. Two eighty RAM. Quadcopter. Quadcopter. Engines disappear. Right. What I'm going to do now, I've turned on my transmitter. I'm going to put power via my USB. And what you'll see is it's now got a heartbeat. See that LED pulsing away? That apparently now is bound and that heartbeat signifies that the device is communicating with my transmitter. So what I'll do now, I shall plug it in and check it out, make sure everything works. But be careful, make sure you go through all the settings. Now, once you've done all these settings, plug them into your NASA software, into your flight control software, and double check, because the settings may have changed. You might find slight differences. So you need to check, recalibrate, do all the bits to do as if you're setting up the new model again. Pain in the ass, I know, but that's what updating firmware is. Um, what else? Fail safes. When you've finished, make sure you set all your fail safes. Flick a switch, high power on your battery transmitter, set the switches, etc., where you want them to be. Press the bind button for two or three seconds and you, you go beep. And then basically that tells your receiver on the craft. This is the last signal and this is the signal you're going to hold when you lose communication and it's as simple as that now you know it, it, it's not rocket science but it is a pain in the ass i gotta admit so if you found your way to this video because of problems you're having then it's probably you've hit the same stumbling block as as myself so flash them all get them all done and hopefully we'll be okay with this firmware for the, the for the foreseeable future. So good luck and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.